So I know uh, a couple of weeks ago I shared on Facebook um, about my Snow White Disney slash Disney experience. And um, probably not everybody saw that, so I'll just kind of try and briefly explain it quick. Um, so when I was 10 years old, my parents took my brother, sister, and I to Disney World in Florida. Um, it was our first time ever going to Disney. And um, <clears throat> at that time, I was 10. Yeah, I was, yeah, no, I was definitely 10. And um, at that time, S Snow White was my favorite princess. I loved Snow White. I, just, I remember as a little girl, I even had a like a little stuff. I had a doll of Snow White, and I rem I just always remember thinking, I want to be Snow White. I love Snow White. I want to. Um, it was my favorite Disney cartoon. Um, I just remember thinking she's got a beautiful voice, and I've always loved singing, whatever. And I loved her dress, and like I just wanted to be Snow White. So when we got there, and you know we saw characters out and doing autographs and whatnot. So my sister and I got in line to meet Snow White <clears throat> and I was so excited and just as it was time it was mine and my sister's turn to meet Snow White she says that she has to go feed the dwarves and you know in that little girl's mind she was crushed you know she's being snubbed by her favorite princess just to go feed a bunch of men like she didn't understand that why you know in her mind she came a long way to meet Snow White and she was more important than a bunch of men that could feed themselves I, I mean those are the thoughts that I, I mean like that's what I remember and I just I remember being just rushed. I was devastated. It left a lasting impression on me to the point where to this day I'm not a big Disney fan and Snow White is my least favorite of the princesses. I don't have a favorite princess. Sure there's a couple that I like you know and I like some of the cartoons but it's like I'm not a big fan. I'm just not and I have no doubt it has everything to do with that experience that I had with Disney. I shared that uh, story with my boss and my coworkers a few weeks ago, and since then they've been um, having fun with it. They've been teasing me, and you know I'm used to being teased. And that's fine. I'm okay with it. I I think I've got a pretty good sense of humor, so I've been playing with it. I've been going with it. Um, so I just want to share with you one of the things that uh, my coworkers did to uh, tease me about it. Yeah, so I come down from training and I see Snow White pictures on my computer and I look around and I see them on every single computer as well as the girls putting them as their background. Just tease me about my Snow White story. So yeah, I thought that was pretty funny, but um, anyway, this morning... Uh, when I was, um, it was about 8.30 this morning, my boss tells me that the girls had something to give to me. So then they proceeded to present me with a signed autographed picture of Snow White and a card from Disney. So what they did was contacted Disney and told them my story. And that was Disney's response to try and make it right to me, which I totally appreciate. I absolutely appreciate the fact that they tried to make it right. And I appreciate the sentiment. And I definitely appreciate what my coworkers did. <clears throat> However, I'm about to jump on my soapbox. There's no way Disney can ever make this right. Um, in my mind, <laughs> currently, and this is what I've thought for years, 
Um, <clears throat> children go to Disney for an experience. A lot of children, I'm sure not all of them, but I'm sure there's a good fair amount of children that go to Disney wholeheartedly believing that those characters are the real characters. And that when they're meeting that character, they're meeting the character that's in their cartoons. And that's the real one, you know. <clears throat> and in my mind at that time, that's what I believed. So what that I was 10? But that's what I believed. I think it's no different than the, you know, kids that believe in Santa and the Easter Bunny and the Tooth Fairy. I mean, those characters are all real to them. You know, that's the mind of a child. And I think that to destroy that is kind of sad. And that's kind of how I feel is what happened. So... You know, I understand that really what happened was that actor, and I know it was an actor now. I, I understand that now in my adult brain. I understand that that was an actor, and that actor was needed for the parade. I get it. But <clears throat> there was a line of children standing there w w patiently waiting, and that's difficult to have, a ki you know, kids wait patiently. And... To say, oh, I'm sorry, you know, Snow White has to go feed the seven dwarfs. Now you've got angry parents because these children have been anxiously waiting for that autograph in the picture with their favorite um, Disney character. Now that parent has to deal with an upset child. Not only that, the parent has to deal with explaining to that upset child what's going on. So... I just think that that should have been handled differently. Personally, the way I think um, it should have ha been handled is that if they need a Snow White actor to be in the parade, that's all well and good. But they should have had a backup Snow White actor to take that, you know, take that place or have another actor be in the parade. What I'm saying is they should have had multiple actors. That way, all those children have an opportunity to meet. Snow White or those characters and get an autograph because I, I'm so sure that I was not the only one that got crushed that day and I'm sure it happened it happened since then I mean it's not like I've I've only been to Disney World one other time and you know it's not like I really remember that trip very much but <clears throat> it's in my mind that it's those children and the impressions that those children get when they're at this supposedly magical place is more important. Um, so something better should have been done. So that's why in my mind, there's just no way. There's just no way that it can be fixed. It can be made right. And <clears throat> there's no way Snow White will ever be my favorite princess because of that. And I just feel as though it's unacceptable, you know, the fact that I patiently waited for something that I really, really, really wanted. I went a long way. I came a long way. I came from Michigan to Florida, you know, to go to Disney World, and I was so excited. So I'm sorry. Laugh at me, roll your eyes. <laughs> really, I mean, I get it. It's comical that a 37-year-old woman can't let go of something that happened when she was 10. I get it. But that's just, it, it, it's my story, and it's how I feel. So, in the end, I really appreciate the effort that was put into this. I appreciate the effort that my coworkers made and that... Um, it shows just how much they care about me, and I, I appreciate that I have coworkers and a boss who do care about me. And I, you know, I do appreciate what Disney did. It's just that, I, to me, it's like it's not enough. <laughs> like, it's, it, there's just no way that a signed autograph picture 27 years later is really going to fix it. But it, it was thoughtful, and it was, it's a sweet sentiment. And, you know, <laughs> comically I'll be able to pass it on to my kids and I'll have that and they'll be able to talk to I don't know maybe it's just gonna be one of those things 
But in the end, um, this is my silly story about me, and I like to entertain people, and I have no doubt that a number of you that watch this video will be entertained by this, so feel free to laugh at me. I'm okay with that.